I've coached players at almost all levels. And universally, I see one dinking pattern that people get wrong time and time again. Today, I'm gonna to tell you what that is and how we're gonna fix it with my dinking golden rule. Beginners who just learned how to dink all the way up to pros, you see that cross court pattern over and over again. I'm gonna give you the advantages and disadvantages of hitting cross court. And more importantly, I'm gonna give you my golden rule to know when you should go back cross court or when you should be changing up that pattern for something else. Let's talk advantages first. There's two main things. Number one, when you hit it cross court, you're gonna create more angle, which is gonna pull your opponent off the court and potentially give you more windows to hit winning shots through. Point. The second one is since that cross court dink is a longer distance, all things being equal, you can hit a more aggressive cross court dink than you can to the middle or down the line. Also, we're able to hit over a lower part of the net. So your cross court dink has the potential to be a lot more aggressive because it can be a little bit flatter and a little bit harder. You can angle the ball, we can hit more aggressive, but there are disadvantages to the cross court dink as well. And there's two main ones. Number one, when you hit the ball cross court, that ball has to cross over the front of the body of your opponent. So even if it's gonna land in the kitchen, if that ball's a little bit high when it crosses in front of them, they can reach in and pick it off and have an attack opportunity. So you might think, okay, well, I'll just hit it shallower in the court. That could be dicey too. If you hit the ball too shallow in a cross court, then it's gonna end up going on a wider angle and have a potential ATP opportunity. When we're hitting cross court, especially in the wrong situation, those margins can get very slim. In general, I think of my cross court dinks as being my offensive or aggressive dinks where I'm looking to create opportunities in the point. Straight ahead or playing to the middle as more neutralizing dinks, more maybe setting up my point or getting myself out of trouble. Hey guys, I wanna give a quick shout out to Selkirk for not only supporting me as a player, but supporting my YouTube videos as well. Lately, I've been using this Power Air, which is an awesome paddle, super poppy, great spin, really maneuverable and fast. If you wanna see this or anything else that they have, check out the website and make sure to use my code to get a free gift card with your purchase. So having said all that, Here's what I consider the golden rule for when I'm gonna go cross court versus when I'm gonna play in front of me. So if I'm standing on the kitchen line, my outside foot in this situation would be my right foot because it's closest to the outside of the court. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an imaginary line that comes off my outside foot going straight to the net. If the ball coming to me stays inside that foot, so say we're here, that's inside, I can go wherever I want. I can hit there, I can hit middle, I can go cross court. If the ball crosses that imaginary line and ends up out here, now I'm not gonna play back cross court anymore. I'm gonna play either in front of me or to the middle. So if we have a ball that's outside that line, I'm gonna play there. I'm not gonna try to hit that shot and hook it back across my body cross court. So you know me, you know I'm not gonna give you advice that I can't give you good reasons to back it up. So why do I have this rule in place? Well, there's three main reasons. Number one is just the execution of the shot is difficult. If that ball goes out past me, for me to be reaching out to my right side and moving that way, and then trying to hit the ball back the opposite direction, is just a difficult shot. It's not natural. It's not 
what our body wants to do because of the way we're moving. And so the execution is, is pretty tricky to pull that off consistently. The second reason is the wider you go, the more your window shrinks to get the ball back cross court. And I'll explain what I mean. So if that ball is moved past my outside foot, that means I'm probably moving wide to get it. So right now we're pretending that you're my opponent. The camera right now is where you'd be if I moved you wide on a dink. So say your target is to go back cross court to that spot. From where you're at, you can see that if I've moved over, covered the middle, and I'm reaching in, your ability to get your shot back to that target is not there. I can reach in and cut it off before the ball is able to get there. So the wider you move, the smaller your window shrinks to get the ball back cross court by me. The third and final reason is when you hit cross court, your next coverage responsibility is to get back to cover the middle to help your partner out. If you're stretched and you're moving wide, moved past my outside foot and I'm moving here, I'm not gonna be able to get back in time to cover middle for that next shot. Versus if the ball is inside this foot, I can hit and almost immediately be back to the middle in time to cover for my next coverage responsibility. So if that ball has moved past my outside foot and we've now determined that I don't wanna take it back cross court, then what is the right shot? Typically the safest play is gonna be able to go to the middle third of the box in front of you. You could go down the line. The problem with that is if you're playing against somebody who's good at an Ernie, they have that opportunity. But if I can make the ball bounce in the middle of that box in front of me, that's the safest play that's gonna be almost unattackable. The other valuable part about doing that is when you play in front of you, if that player in front of you decides to play the ball back to you, that ball is no longer moving on an angle. So it's harder for that person to get the ball back outside your foot. So when they come right back at you, you're gonna be able to keep that outside foot outside the ball. And now you can resume with a good strong cross court shot that you know you can hit under control and get back to cover the middle. Don't forget to screenshot this so you can have it saved and take it out next time you're on the court.